Okay, it's time to begin Unit 17B, which is on sound power. And uh, we'll just dive right into it because I assume you've already watched the pre-class video. And so you're interested in um, <clears throat> how to do problems. So here we're talking about sound radiates uniformly in all directions. If that's true, and if power is not absorbed, which is more or less assumed but not stated here, then <clears throat> the following is true. The um, intensity of sound is equal to the power of the source, divided by the area uh, that the sound is going through. <clears throat> so this is uh, sound intensity. I guess you can't see that. Intensity is I, and it's measured in watts per meter squared. Watt, you know from our power before, is joules per second, joules per second meter squared. This is the source power. Which is measured in watts. And this is the area of observation. Uh, and that's in meters squared. And this will usually be um, a, uh, <clears throat> well, I won't say it usually be, but so <clears throat> uh, this equation we're going to use over and over again. There'll be one more that relates to decibels. Uh, and the key when you're solving this equation is, uh, to choose the correct area uh, that go together. So often you will um, use more than once. And how you use it more than once, for example, you have a, a source to a spherical area. And then you take a sub area of that that goes to a power. And so the sub area to power is um, P is equal to I times A. And this, and we'll call this A2, uh, P2. And over here, the source gives you I is equal to uh, P1 over A1, right? So this is the total area it's going to from the source that gives you I. You take a sub area, you get the power in that sub area. That's a typical case we're going to use this twice. Uh, in this particular problem, we're just doing this piece right here. Uh, that's this problem. And so let's get started. <clears throat> this here, the intensity of sound is this, that's I. Uh, eight meters away, that defines a uh, radius r and so the surface area of the sphere is equal to a is equal to 4 pi r squared right that little square there is for meters squared which is an area and this surface area sphere is from the 
radiates uniformly in all directions. That is, you know, as sphere. It's a sphere that's expanding out, right? <clears throat> and so that's our area. Depends on this R, we have I, and so we use P is equal to I times A because we want the power. I we're given 0.5 watts per meter squared. And the area that goes with that A is the whole spheric area of the sphere, right? If it's total power, it's total area of that shell. So it's total source. Uh, total area of sphere surface. Those go together and gives you the source power. And the area here is this 4 pi uh, r squared. And it's 4 pi 8 squared meter squareds. The meter squareds cancel out and you get a 64 times 4 times 5 times a half and that turns out to give you 402 watts which is this one so that's this piece now let's see if we can do another piece uh, <clears throat> this is another one that's the first part we have a jackhammer radiates noise uniformly in all directions then you think of a spherical area it's the surface area 4 pi r squared that should come to you when you see that 20 meters away that's the radius since the noise he hears is uh, this and so what we want here is to calculate the power of the source. And that's equal to the, uh, uh, the I intensity on a sphere uh, times the area of that sphere, which is equal to uh, the intensity is here, that's I, and the area we wrote down is that, so it's uh, 2E minus 4 watts per meter squared times 4 pi 20 squared meters squared. And you can uh, then say, okay, multiply that out <clears throat> and it gives you pretty close to 10 watts so that's the source power and now uh, we want to figure out uh, how does this source power do at a different distance so now we do the same thing the source is equal to i sphere a sphere but now these two are at at a different distance of 90 meters still works except this time we want to know the intensity so we solve the intensity i is equal to p over a the source power we just calculated is uh, 10 watts. The area is 4 pi r. Now r is 90, 90 squared meters squared. And you can multiply this out and you find 9.9 .9 e minus 6 watts per meter squared. And that's this one. So as you expect, <clears throat> we used it twice. This time we're using it at different distances. 
So the area changes because of the distance, you're further away. The source power is still the same. So the key here is the source power is the same. So calculate from Brian and use for Leslie. That's how we go about this. Okay, now let's take it one more. <clears throat> and this is a slightly different version of that. <clears throat> it's the same problem. But now, instead of saying, let's take a different distance, let's take a different area. And so remember what we did before. Here we found, uh, well, we'd have the intensity, actually. You don't need to bring anything from over there. This is the area of Brian's eardrum. And so uh, we want the energy instant on his eardrum over one minute. So energy is equal to uh, power times time. Remember power is energy per time, so energy is power times time. So that's what we're going to do in the end here, uh, P times T. But we want here is we want P on the eardrum. And so this is all about choosing the right thing. Power on eardrum is equal to I, wherever it is, uh, times the area of the eardrum. And the in Brian's intensity that he hears is this. So that's the intensity at Brian. The area of the eardrum we're given to be right here. And so we can calculate the power on the eardrum from this. Uh, and uh, well, we might as well go straight to the energy. So the energy is equal to I times area of the eardrum times T, which is 2E minus 4 watts per meter squared. Area is 3.5 E minus 5 meters squared. And the time is one minute. I'll just convert to 60 seconds. If you multiply those out, you get watts times seconds. That's joules. Uh, that's 7 times 6 is uh, uh, 42. <clears throat> And uh, you get um, 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 8, and then 10 to the minus 7, because it's the, uh, the um, uh, so it's 4.2 E minus 7 joules. And let's see, the reason why I'm not getting 4.56 is that this is not uh, 3.5, it's 3.8. And so 3.8 times 2 is 6. Uh, <clears throat> um, it's slightly higher, and that's actually where the 4.56 comes from, which is this one. So if I put in the right number the first time, then I actually get the right uh, number out the back end. <clears throat> so this is the kind of thing I mean by watch the area that goes to power, right? You had a certain distance away, the total power going through the total area of that distance is, you know, about 10 watts from the source, right? But how much actually hits this little piece of area at that distance? Well, on this, that little piece of area at that distance is the same I times area of the eardrum, which is much smaller, right? It's, um, uh, <clears throat> well, 60 times smaller than that, right? It's a very low uh, power. And then uh, the energy over a minute is still pretty 
small. Now your ear is very sensitive. So your ear has no trouble hearing that. And in fact, a jackhammer is pretty loud even at 20 meters. So to your ear, this is a huge loud sound. And we'll get to talking about uh, decibels in just a minute is how we quantify these things. And then that's how loud is loud. That's about where we're going to get here. Now the key equation for how loud is loud is what's called the decibel level. And it's the sound intensity in decibels. And it's equal to uh, what we call beta with units dB for decibel. That's just a standard. <clears throat> uh, and the formula is this, beta is equal to 10 log, that's log base 10, regular log on your, on your uh, calculator. Not the LN, that's base 2.73. This is log base 10, the regular one. I divided by I naught. Uh, these are both usually given in watts per square meter, but as long as they're the same units, it doesn't matter too much. And the um, I naught is equal to 1E minus. 12 watts per meter squared. And that's the uh, limit of human hearing. The average person can just barely make out that amount of noise. <clears throat> and so that is uh, why that's set as the uh, level. Now, <clears throat> If you plot the log of I versus I, it looks something like this. So quiet stuff, big changes for quiet. And, you know, less sensitive to uh, loud changes. And this is actually how you hear. This is how the ear works. You hear logarithmically. Meaning that you hear the quiet sounds, you hear the whispers, and then not too much louder is the normal talking, and not too much louder is stuff that's really pretty loud uh, if you look at a power level. And the reason why you hear this way is because you can hear the whispers and you can still hear the loud noises and you hear it at the same time. By the way, you also see this way. <clears throat> uh, I see light logarithmically. And that's why you can, uh, you can see a shadow and sunny air spots at once. That's the log. But you go take a picture of this, photo can't, because the photo, the camera is linear. So you go take a look, you can see what's in the shadow, you can see what's in the sun next to it. You say, that's pretty, you take a picture and the camera says it's black in the shadow and you see the sunny part nice, so the sunny part's just bright, you can't see anything, and you can see in the shadow because your camera's linear. So here you see with your eyes, it's a little bit easier to sense the log of the eyes, you get a picture of it because it's like, uh, the same kind of thing goes along in the sound world. That's how your eye works. That's why 
we measure sound in dBs. And so um, this is in one direction. So the other way um, is I over I naught is equal to 10 to the beta over 10. So if you have the dBs and you want I, you use this. If you have I's and you want dB, you use this. Now, those of you that know enough math know that if you take beta divided by 10, how do you get rid of a log? You take 10 to the both sour on both sides, you get that, and that's how you end up here. Okay, so let's now solve this particular uh, problem. And uh, the, um, in this case, we're given dB and we want power. So we use this one. And so we write uh, I is equal to I naught 10 to the beta over 10. And so that's equal to 1E minus 12 watts per meter squared, 10 to the 75 divided by 10. So that's 10 to the 7.5. You've got to use that 10 to the x thing on your calculator. You put in 7.5, 10 to the x. And if you do it correctly, you end up, and you might want to practice this, you end up with 3.16 times 10 to the minus 5 watts per meter squared. And that turns out to be this one. OK, so we use this one. and But be prepared to use this one. Also, you get this, calculate the log, multiply by 10. And that's how you go the other way. So uh, let's take a, another example. Jane is three meters from TV, and the decibel level she hears is 75 dB. What is the sound power output from the TV speakers? Assuming they radiate sound uniformly, that probably sounds like area of a sphere problem. Four pi r squared, I bet that's gonna come in here somehow. In fact, we want the power from the TV speaker she wants, right? So power from the speaker, it's equal to I, um, the irradiance times the area of the sphere, because it's the total speaker power, it's the area, and that's three meters. And so uh, we want this, we need I. So put that over here, need I. And that's where the 75 dB comes from. So again, I is equal to I naught. 10 to the beta over 10. We just calculated what that was. And um, we find that it's uh, 3.57 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, no, it's not that one. What did we just calculate? Let's... Ah, here it is, 3.16. times 10 to the minus five watts per meter squared. That was what 75 dB on the last uh, problem. And so we can make use of that to get kind of quickly where we're going here. How are the speaking is then uh, 3.16 E minus five watts per meter squared. The area, four pi, three meters, nine meters squared. <clears throat> it's R squared. And so we take, we multiply uh, this out <clears throat> and you, um, uh, let's see, there's, uh, um, Uh, you get um, 
uh, five seven e minus three watts, which turns out to be this one. <clears throat> and that you can kind of tell is uh, pi times that's going to be about 10, 9 is about another 10 or less. So it's a little under 4, and two tens drop that down by 2, and you get this. It makes, makes sense. Okay. Uh, and something a little bit more challenging here, perhaps. <clears throat> Uh, Andy and Ben are 10 meters apart, and the TV, TV is somewhere on a line between them. Okay, better draw a picture. It's starting to get complicated. So here's Andy, here's Ben. <clears throat> and uh, let's look at the, t the intensity at Andy's location is 30. And the intensity of Ben's location is 75. So I'm guessing it's not it's closer to Ben, right? Because he's got a higher sound intensity. So let's assume that's there for our picture. And then this distance here is the radius from Andy. And this distance here, the radius from Ben. So when we mean radius from Ben, we mean there's a sphere that goes around the source and goes out to Ben. And of course, this is a sphere that goes around the source and goes all the way out to Andy, kind of goes off the picture here. And these spheres are very different areas, and so you're going to get different powers on them. And so we've got to use uh, over here, the intensity at Ben is equal to the power of the source over the area of the sphere, uh, radius rb, and a similar thing over here for Andy. Intensity at Andy is equal to the power of the source over the area of the sphere of radius ra. <clears throat> and so uh, let's, um, uh, let's see, what do we know? <clears throat> we know that this 10 meters here is Ra plus Rb. And we know the two intensities. And so uh, we can know also that the C poor source power, it's the same source. So uh, P source is the same for both. And let's, um, let's solve for it, right? <clears throat> and so the, um, uh, uh, we need to convert to I from, from the uh, watts per square centimeter. So I, um, I B is equal to I not, uh, 10 to the 75 uh, over 10. And we already know what that is because we've used it twice so far. That's, um, oh, where is that? Uh, 3.16 uh, E minus five watts per meter squared. Uh, and we know that um, uh, over here, uh, we've got um, uh, I A is equal to um, I naught uh, times 10 to the 30 dB. So it's 30 over 10 is three. And this I naught is equal to, uh, but it's E minus 12, one E minus 12 times uh, one E three is equal to uh, 10 to the minus nine watts per meter squared. 
So we've got the two eyes. We know the two P sources the same. So we put them together and we find uh, P source is equal to uh, uh, on this side uh, I B A of R B sphere and on this side it's equal to I A uh, times the area of R A and so I A times 4 pi R A squared had better be equal to uh, I B times four pi R B squared, or um, <clears throat> the um, uh, the four the um, four pi's will cancel out on both sides. So we have two equations. We have um, R A plus R B is equal to 10 meters. And we can solve that for R B is equal to 10 meters minus R A. So that's from up here, that's number one. And number two is this one over here. If we combine them together, in other words, you take this R B and shove it in there, uh, we find that um, uh, the um, uh, well, we need R B squared, right? So we can as well solve R B squared is equal to uh, 100 minus 20 R A uh, plus R A squared, <clears throat> and we plug that into here and we find I A R A squared is equal to I B times 100 minus 20 R A plus R A squared. Now, how does one go about solving this? Well, you've got to convert it into a nice form. So with a little bit of algebra, we'll move this to the other side. Zero is equal to I B from here minus I A from here times R A squared uh, minus 20 I B R A uh, plus 100 I B and that's equal to zero. So this is A, this with the minus sign is B, this is C, and R A is equal to minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, which you know. Um, <clears throat> If you plug in all the numbers you get, RA is equal to 9.94 meters. And that's what we wanted. How far is the TV from Andy? If you want it from, if we plug back into RB equals 10 meters minus RA, you find that RB is in fact 0 0.06 meters, six centimeters, uh, this far, right? How far? So uh, Ben is pretty close to that speaker. <clears throat> All right, Andy's almost 10 meters away. That's what the dB does for you. That's a big difference. So this is about as hard as you can get because we had to use the quadratic formula. And we had to set up the two equations and put them together. But in reality, what did we really have to do here has to involve physics. Power source, area that goes with that for I at B at that distance, the same thing for A, so you use it twice. 
you realize the source power is the same for both of them. You set the two equal, get one equation, and then of course this is usually the other one, and you just grind through to your answer. Um, so that is all the kinds of things that you have to do with the sound intensities. And they're all really coming back to using this at the right area and the right power and using either this or this to go one way or the other with your irradiance to dB or dB to irradiance. Those are the key things to be able to do for problems of this type. And that's it for our, um, that's it for our uh, three, uh, 17B. So we'll see you next time for 17C, where we'll talk about Doppler frequencies, Doppler shifts, and beats. <clears throat> and then after that, we'll be getting to interference and the like after interference will of course be interrupted for our test but then we'll be back to business with 17e and then into uh, fluids before the final okay see you next time <laughs>